I jolted awake after my alarm clock went off on my phone. I sighed and I got up from my messy bed. I picked up my phone and I stopped my alarm. I looked at the clock and it was exactly 3.30 a.m. in the morning. I work at a 24-7 Wendy's. It would have been fine if I didn't work night shift nor get paid barely to support myself in life. I wasn't happy. I stood up and exited my room. The hallway was just as dark as outside. I flipped the switch to the lights and it was bright enough for me to see. It was November 16th of 2013. Last month only felt like yesterday. It was quiet as I got ready for work. It wasn't this quiet, but I didn't seem to mind it. I went back to my room and went through my closet. I put on my appropriate uniform for Wendy's. I felt uneasy, but I always feel like this every time I wake up. I packed up for work and I left the house in silence. I locked the door to the house and I looked around. The sky was pitch black and there was only two starts I can spot in the night sky. I approach my car and I enter the vehicle. I rest my head on the wheel. I don't really want to work at Wendy's, but if I quit my life is probably over. I insert my keys in the ignition and I drive away. As I drive through I keep checking behind me, the uneasy feeling stuck with me. As I pull up to the Wendy's parking lot, I thought to myself how everyone can agree working at fast food sucks. I had to work though. I exit my car and I approach the Wendy's building. I open the door and the cashier behind the register slowly whispered a quiet joyful, yes. He packed up and left without a second thought. I watched his vehicle pull out of his parking spot and leave the area. It was just me in the restaurant now. I clock in and I walk behind the register. I usually watch the lonely restaurant turn into a joyful place full of people eating. I always had a strange fascination of watching time happen. For example, like the time of day turning into a sunset or something else. The minimalist design greatly destroyed the building in a subtle way though. I really dislike it. Its colorful walls turned into bright shades of red and plain wood. Hopefully the trend doesn't grow any larger. As I think to myself, I unexpectedly see a car pull into the parking lot. A man with an average red shirt and jeans walks into the restaurant and approaches me. He starts with, Hey there, can I order crispy chicken and natural cut fries? I nod and I head to kitchen. I start up the cooking equipment and I cook the food that he asked for. After 13 minutes of straight cooking, I finally finish the food. I sighed in relief and I put the food on the plates. I approach the customer. He's sitting on a table somewhere in the middle of the restaurant. I put the food in front of him. He devours it quickly. The food looked good and I forgot to eat breakfast when I woke up because I didn't want to be late. But then we have a great conversation about the history of the restaurant and how he was a weekly customer here. I do recognize him. The conversation quickly ends though as he packs up and leaves. I stare at his car through the window as he pulls out. I return to the register and I wait for someone to arrive. Working a night shift really isn't fun and waiting for customers to arrive to spend your time is a pain in the ass. But for some reason, it was quiet. The sound of the fan on the ceiling was the only thing I can hear. The uneasy feeling crept onto me again and I feel like I just wanted to leave and never come back to this place. I saw a car pull into the parking lot and I sigh in relief. Another man with a suit like he's heading to work enters. He approaches the register and asks for a basic order. I head to the kitchen again and I start cooking. I eventually finish cooking and I bring the food to the customer. He's located on the table in the corner. I place the food on the table and he says, I said I wanted ketchup on it. I remember the phrase that's in the back of my head. The customer is always right. I pick up the food and I place it under a ketchup dispenser. I pump it onto the food and I return the food to him. He gives a quick thank you and I return to the register as he eats. As I wait for the next customer, I only hear the sound of chewing and munching in the distance. But it takes me a moment to realize the sound of the familiar chewing stopped. I glance over at the customer in the corner. He finished his food and now he's just sitting on the table. The plate's sitting there, his head looking straight ahead. He does nothing else but that. Normally it wouldn't be a problem because customers always fall asleep while eating at this time but he's surely awake. I'm not sure what he's doing and I'm not sure if I want to approach him. My uneasy feeling grows bigger by the second. 
I contemplate whether I should dash out of the restaurant. But it's not a problem, right? He's not causing any harm. I've been staring at him. I don't even fucking know how long it's been. I'm waiting for a customer to come in. But there was none. Eventually, the sky would turn dark blue. I checked my phone. It's about 5.12 a.m. in the morning. The customer came in at 4.24. I pull out my phone again, and I call my supervisor to tell him about the situation. But just as soon as I do, two cars pull into the parking lot. I have a wave of relief wash over me. Two young men enter the Wendy's and order food. I take their order and I cook them food. As I cook, I think about the customer that's still on that table. Staring straight ahead, doing nothing, finished his own food probably an hour and a half ago. About the time I finish both of their orders, the break of dawn has filled the sky with pink and orange tint, making the outside finally bright. I bring the two young men their food and I sit behind the register again, not feeling so uneasy anymore with the two people to accompany me, numerous cars start filling the roads outside. Eventually, one of the men glance at the emotionless customer that hasn't moved an inch since around 4 a.m. He speaks. Hey, what's up with that dude? I don't know. He's just sitting there. They both stare at him. I zone out because of the breathtaking sunrise outside till I snap back to reality and realize the two men haven't spoken for six minutes now. I take a step back. I'm telling you. This is the most fear I ever had during my six years of working here. My intense feeling of being watched comes to an end as multiple customers finally come in and talk happily, probably about 13 customers each. They all approach me in order. I take their order with enthusiasm as they are the first big group of people to come in today. I joyfully cook in the kitchen, some chicken and more. I make sure to bring them good food. I sprinkle salt on some orders and mustard on others. I hear the loud chattering in the distance abruptly stop, but I don't seem to mind it. I finish all the orders and I pick up the first plate for the first group. As I exit the kitchen, I drop the plate. It cracked on the floor. My eyes went wide. The entire group of the customers are silent, being still just like the man in the suit and the two young men. I never felt this scared in my entire fucking life. Everyone was still as a rock. I take two steps back and my breathing intensifies. It's just the sounds of my breathing and the fan. The orange tint of the early morning comes out of the windows. The people are staring at each other or at the wall silently without doing anything. The day shift cashier pulls up to the Wendy's parking lot. Without a second thought, I pack my shit and I dash out of the front doors. I never ran so fast in my life. Before I know it, I'm already driving on the freeway back home. I'm probably going over the speed limit, but I seriously don't care at all. Thankfully, I did make it home. The sky was now bright blue and I pull into the driveway. I exit my vehicle and I look around in relief. The birds are chirping and the wind is calming. I enter my house and I scan the area. It's the same, just like it was last night. I sit on my couch and I rest my head in my hands. It has been two days since the incident now. I'm just on my bed chatting with my supervisor on my phone. He tells me information about what happened after I left. He tells me that the people were never seen again and the day shift cashier also went missing. He adds on to that by telling me that the case is still ongoing, but due to recent concerns the local Wendy's is permanently shut down. After the conversation, I hang up and I sigh. I'm never working night shift ever again, and if you're watching this, I hope you won't too.